A world consumed by war, an ancient evil resurrected, a millennia-old bargain comes due. When two blades clash, the third will fall, and the fate of all will be jeopardized. To save Lazaria, the failures of the past must be atoned for by a new generation of heroes. The time has come for mortals to cast off sight, and, in doing so, truly come to see. Victory is never absolute. Seven centuries ago, the forces of order won the Illyrite War on the plains of Harmuth. Darmatis and Raban Aurelian slew their elder brother Sarkon, the despotic architect of the conflict, then sacrificed themselves to banish the cataclysmic vortex opened with his dying breath. The first advent of the Oblivion Well was thwarted. Even without their vanished gods, the seven races of Lorzaria proved themselves capable of safeguarding their world. Or so the story goes. The year is now 697 ABH, after the Battle of Harmoth. The war itself remains much the same, the weapons with which it is waged have evolved. Airships bearing powerful cannons ply the skies, reducing the influence of mages and their spells. Long-range communication has brought far-flowing regions of Lazaria closer than ever before. At the center of this technological revolution are three Terran states of Dermatia, Raban, and Sarconia, who have fought a near-ceaseless campaign of 700 years in an attempt to best each other. The roots of their enmity lie buried beneath the wastelands of Harmuth, a place all three nations consider best forgotten. However, an ancient power sealed with Harmuth has not forgotten them, and the descendants of those who fought on that field must now take a stand to rectify the mistakes of the past. Christopher Russell presents the first book in his gripping fantasy series, Divinity's Twilight. Alright, um, well, I'm about to lose my battery. Uh, Divinity's Twilight is a, well, rebirth, first book in the series, um, is a very interesting first start to a, what looks like like it's going to be a very complex novel. Um, there's a lot going on. You have 700 years of history that goes into this book. Now most of that 700 years is sort of like negligible. The bit that's really important is the, you know, Battle of Harmoth and then 700 years later. So there's a lot going on. Um, the three brothers, Sarkon, um, Dermatis, and Raban were gifted mages who well, ended up causing lots of problems. Um, and now the kingdoms that are formed from their descendants uh, and by their people and whatnot are basically at war again. And because they don't actually know what really happened during the Battle of Harmuth, they can guess, but they don't actually know, um, many things are likely to be repeated. And this is bad. For, for a lot of reasons. Um, yeah. Okay, so this book is very complex. It has a wide cast of characters and it has a large range of events that you have to keep in your mind. However, I think it does a fairly decent job of keeping all of those in... well, it makes sense. Uh, it keeps all of them straight and things flow as you would expect. You don't have to struggle to figure out, okay, wait, this person said this way back when, and it was that way, but are we sure? And yes, so you don't have to do that. It's a very good book in that regard. Um, it definitely keeps things moving forward in a proper, straightforward sense. Wow, that made absolutely no sense. Let me try this again. Um, it kept events and characters straight, uh, so you weren't struggling to keep track of them. The events themselves I think are very interesting simply because you get to twine the history and present together and that is always fun to do because let's just, you know, be honest here. How much of history do we actually remember? Yeah, not much. Um, it's a thing. So I like that quite a bit. The characters... Okay, there are several characters that we follow throughout this book. The people on the Sarconian side, I don't like. I'm not supposed to like them, so I find this acceptable. The people on the, uh, well, sort of Darmatia side, mostly, um, our cadets, our main characters, or whatnot, <sighs> there's only three of those that I like, and they're not the main people. Um, Silette and Valen, Valen? I'm gonna go with Valen because I watch Babylon 5. Um, Slet and Valen, <sighs> I get their motivation, I really do, and I get that they're 
probably going to adapt and change and like rule the story and it's going to probably turn out well but as they are right now I don't like them they're kind of really awful people um Mateo and Vel and Unter I like quite a lot I think they're very nice I think they do well with the story I think they probably learn the most from this book and are definitely the most interesting in my opinion to follow so they make up for a lot of the fact that I found Silette and Valen kind of eh. Now, granted, that will change in book two. You can already sort of see things changing and whatnot. And there is definitely going to be like serious character arc development, whatnot going on with those two. I mean, you just, you know it. But as it starts in this first story, that sets up the whole series. I don't like them and I feel badly about not liking them because uh, they're meant to be important and I, I dislike disliking important characters unless you're meant to dislike them. And I'm not sure if I'm actually meant to dislike them. So, I don't know. Um, as for the writing itself, the prose is very clean, the prose, it's very neat, but there is a lot of detail that I think was perhaps unnecessary. Some of this was uh, describing the technology, and while I find the engineering aspects absolutely fascinating, it wasn't necessary to either plot or character. So I think probably about a third of it, a third of that detail, um, describing the world, describing the technology and whatnot could have been cut down. Yeah. Um, but that being said, the prose itself was very good. It was very easy to follow, very easy to read, and yet it had that extra, almost poetical sense that you really like to see from some very high arching epic fantasy novels. Um, so it had that extra poetical element, and yet it was easy to follow and you understood exactly what was going on. So in that case, very well done. Um, my main critique is that I just, those two characters, Salette and Valen, didn't like him. Anyways, I like Mateo. He's probably my favorite. Yeah. All right. Um, yes. So <laughs> my battery is about to die on this camera. Uh, so I'd better say that's all I've got for you this week. And, um, as usual, all of the links are in the description box below. You should definitely go have a look at the cover though, because, oh my gosh, it's freaking beautiful. It's just really, really cool. <sighs> I love the cover. <laughs> that's a whole thing. Um, yeah, definitely, definitely go check this out. It's worth a read, I would say. I like it. I may not love all of the characters, but I did I did like the book. Yeah, Mateo sold it for me, frankly. Like, out of all of them, he sold it. But, but anyways, anyways, anyways. So don't cause too much trouble, and I shall see you next time. Bye.